Hey travelers, Mag and I here on day 81 of our trip across the United States. This morning we are starting off on the northern edge of St. Paul. From here, we're gonna work our way backwards on our planned route going through St. Paul back into Minneapolis. The reason for this is that Aichen has a doctor's appointment later on this afternoon in Minneapolis and we're gonna work our way toward it instead of away from it as our original route would have had us doing. Don't worry, Aichan's doctor stop is for a totally routine visit, nothing to worry about. She's just gonna go in and get her wellness check, some shots, and hopefully we'll be in and out of there in no time at all and still be able to get some more caching done for the day. That does, however, mean it's gonna be a little bit shorter of a caching day than usual. Minneapolis and St. Paul is one of the few places in Minnesota we've actually been to before. So why are we here geocaching in a city that we've already been to when we don't need the county of the page? Well, it's a lot like the reason that we went geocaching in Boston, even though we didn't need to go there. The only time we've been to Minneapolis and St. Paul was in the middle of the night with our geocaching friends, which was fantastic for traffic because we could find parking everywhere and move in and out of the city with no problem. But you can only see so much in the middle of the night. So we're kind of doing a redo here and we're going to go get to tour of the city again and get to see the same sites in the daylight and a whole lot of new sites that we didn't have time for the last time. We've also got a lot of good geocache targets on the list. We don't know what we're gonna have time for, but we're gonna try and get as much as we can before the clock runs out and we gotta get Aichan over to the doctor. No matter what happens, we're good. Even if we didn't cache the whole rest of the day from right now, it's fine, it doesn't make a difference because we don't need anything here anyway. This whole day is just for fun, and so that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go out there and we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna get to have you come along with us. So let's go see what Minneapolis and St. Paul has in store today. Come on, let's go. We got our day kicked off in the Sand Dunes Natural History Area on the north end of St. Paul. This remnant of a sand dune prairie right in the middle of the city was the perfect place to get the dog out on the trails to burn some of that energy. It's also a good spot to view the wildlife if you keep your eyes open. The swans were diving for food in Moore Lake. I liked watching this guy put his butt up in the air as he was looking for his breakfast. Not one of my normal dining habits, but hey, if it works, it works. We also managed to catch the timing just right to watch this gaggle of geese come in for a water landing. There's only one trail that leads through the sand dunes area, so it's easy to find your way in this park. And we were even fortunate enough to be able to pick up a couple of geocache finds along the way too. A lock and lock. Ooh, with a travel bug too. Sometimes geocaches can be mistaken for trash, but it's not every day that the trash gets mistaken for a geocache. This container is actually fully loaded. The logbooks were divided into separate tins and the trash can itself was absolutely loaded to the gills with swag. Definitely a lot of stuff to choose from here if you want to do some trading. The dog still needed a bit of a walk though, so we hit one more hiking trail just to get the rest of her energy burned out. And wouldn't you know it, we had a couple of geocaches to find along that walk too. I'm never really concerned with the swag that's in a geocache, so it didn't bother me that all that was in here was a dinosaur and a logbook. In fact, the majority of caches we found today looked a lot more like this. I was very excited when we came across the 45th parallel marker. But little did I know. Who would have thought we would have been lucky enough to get not one, but two 45th parallel markers today. That's pretty cool in my book. As we worked our way back south and west through St. Paul back toward Minneapolis, we visited the Como Park Zoo and Conservatory. This is actually set aside on a very large green space, which is beautiful leading all the way up to the main grounds. It's also free and open to newcomers and frequent visitors all year long. This is clearly one of those spots in the Twin Cities where you could come and relax for hours and just enjoy the beautiful views out over the gardens or the water. We stuck relatively close to the parking areas for all the spots we visited though because it was time for the dog's mid-afternoon nap and you don't want to mess with that. 
She did, however, come join me for a hike up the Newport Bailey Family School Forest Park trails. The higher you ascend along this trail system, the better the views of the city below you get. We hiked our way all the way up to the base of the water tower at the top so that we could go find the Minnesota DeLorme Challenge, which was really our big goal for the day. It's a couple hundred feet into the thick woods though, so I left Aichan tethered just at the edge of the trail while I pushed my way in to go make the find. And there it is, just tossed onto the ground. The Minnesota DeLorme Challenge. This was a big one. Yeah. Not a whole lot in there. <laughs> but that's all I need is this little shredded log book. I'm good to go. By this point in the day, it was almost time for Aichan's doctor's appointment, but we still had just enough time left to squeeze in a visit to Minnehaha Falls within Minnehaha Regional Park. This place was extremely busy with people all over enjoying the 193 acre park. In fact, we discovered that it is one of Minnesota's oldest and most popular parks attracting just shy of a million visitors each year. With the main draw being this 53 foot waterfall. There are also trails leading to a viewing area near the base of the waterfall, but unfortunately you can't get any closer than the base of this bridge. The other access points are gated and locked, and it looks like they've been that way for a pretty long time. So we enjoyed the view right here from the bridge instead. Our last stop of the day, ironically, wasn't even a planned stop. We just happened to notice a virtual in the area focused on this piece of artwork. Only once we were here did we discover that this was a center point of the Minneapolis Sculpture Garden, an 11 acre park right in the heart of the city. Once we saw what it was, we knew we wouldn't be leaving before the sun went down. It turns out this is one of the largest urban sculpture gardens in the country, with 40 permanent art installations and several other temporary pieces that are moved in and out periodically. Even more impressive is that this park is free to the public and available from 6 a.m. to midnight every day. There were visitors all around enjoying the sculptures, so it was quite impressive that I was able to get all of these shots without people in them, for the most part. Each piece is marked with a placard so that you can look at the name and the description of what you're looking at, but there's also a self-guided tour available online so that you can look at even further details about each of the pieces featured here in the park. If you ever have the opportunity to come visit, make sure to bring along a lunch so that you can sit and enjoy a picnic in the park because you're certainly going to be here for a while trying to take it all in. I found my favorite just around the corner from the walking man. These monumental heads are part of the September Room by Mark Manders. They combine human figures and architectural elements to evoke the past, present, familiar, and unfamiliar all together. With all the variety offered here in the Sculpture Park, you're sure to find your favorite as well. Because I didn't even have time to capture it all, the sun was already starting to set before I got through each of the pieces. And once the lighting failed altogether, the dog and I actually sat down and enjoyed our dinner that we had picked up on the way into the park. This was certainly a great way to end a great tour of the Twin Cities today. Well, travelers, that brings a close to another fantastic day geocaching around the Minnesota area. And we had a great day here in the Twin Cities. Reversing our plan and working from St. Paul back into Minneapolis was the perfect solution to our timing issue with her doctor visit, which went perfectly well by the way. What didn't go so well was the Minnesota DeLorme challenge. Right after I'd finished signing the logbook, I went to return the geocache into the place where it was hidden originally. As soon as I touched the hiding place, a swarm of bees rose up. I knew immediately I was in trouble. So I turned and hightailed it as quick as I could out of there, but it was in a pretty thickly wooded spot and I couldn't get away fast enough. So the bees got all over me and they ended up stinging me quite a bit. Thank goodness I wear all the gear that I do because it saved me from getting a lot more bee stings than I did. We had a lot of targets on our list that were in the downtown Minneapolis area that we skipped out on today because I just didn't want to deal with the traffic issues. Now that things have died down a little bit in the downtown area, we're going to circle back and see what we can do from that. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have a lot of daylight on our side, so I don't expect that we got any good shots out of it to share with you. 
Tomorrow we'll be getting back on the road and back onto our route. It was really good to have today's day of rest, but we're gonna get back on those county and pages. So like this video, subscribe to stay tuned for daily updates, and we'll see you out on the trails.